Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the mysterious trip taken by the Trop family of Australia in the summer of 2016? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll go through a quick background of the Trump family. I'll move to the timeline of the incident, and then I'll offer my analysis. Starting with the background, this case primarily involves five members of the Trump family, 51-year-old Mark, his 53-year-old wife, Jacoba, and their three children, 29-year-old Rihanna, 25-year-old Mitchell, and Ella, who was 22. The family operated a farm in Sylvan, Victoria, Australia, which is east of Melbourne, and they also had an earth-moving business. They grew berries on the farm, specifically red currants. I was curious about this, so I looked up the history of red currants, and it was like this tangent that kind of took me on a half-hour adventure of my own. Apparently, they were banned in the United States many years ago, but now it's up to the states to allow them to be grown or not. There's disease-resistant red currant berries now that I guess are safer. It's this whole long thing. But either way, the berry that they grew was a red currant, which I guess is not only legal in Australia, but it must be somewhat of a popular berry. On August 29, 2016, the family climbed into their Peugeot SUV for an unplanned trip. The family members had been paranoid about somebody trying to steal their money. It appears as though the idea originated with Mark, although by the time the family departed, Everyone was convinced of this to some degree. They started to share his fear. The family started driving north toward New South Wales. There did not appear to be any specific destination in mind. They did not take any credit cards or cell phones except one phone, which was in the possession of Mitchell. He had brought it secretly. At some point, though, that phone was detected. He was forced to throw it from the window of the vehicle not long after they departed over concerns that it could be used to track them. The three adult children grew concerned that their parents may be manifesting delusional behavior. Moving to August 30, Mitchell started to realize that there was no basis for the fear they were experiencing. He left the trip at the town of Bathurst and used public transportation to make his way back to the family home. The other four members of the family continued on the journey. Not long after this, Rihanna and Ella also decided it was time to leave their parents. Ella had specific concerns that somebody needed to feed the horses at the farm. They would steal a pickup truck that same day from the town of Goulburn. Somehow, these two became separated, but not before calling the police and expressing concerns about their parents' behavior. Rihanna was found in the back of a Ford F-250 owned by a man named Keith Whitaker. He was driving when he felt a kick in the back of his seat. He pulled over, discovered her, and called the police. Whitaker would say that he was extremely shocked to find a person in his vehicle. Some people go into crisis mode if a bee is buzzing around in their vehicle. Imagine finding a human in the back seat, although I guess finding a human-sized bee would be even scarier. Rihanna did not know who she was or where she was. Whitaker described her as catatonic. Before she was taken to the local hospital and treated for a stress-related illness, she offered Whitaker $50 for his trouble. He refused and said he was just glad to help. While this was going on, Ella continued her escape in the stolen vehicle. So now Rihanna was in the hospital and Ella was still on the run. Because the family was reported missing, the police visited the family farm. They noticed a few things there that were curious. There were horses on the property, but nobody was attending to them. The front door was unlocked. Financial documents related to the family business were stacked in piles around the house as if somebody had been going through them. Several of the vehicles on the property had keys in the ignition, and the police would find credit cards and phones around the house. Moving to August 31, Mitchell and Ella make it back to the farm separately. The police were waiting there. The pair relayed stories to the officers about their family vacation. They mentioned how their parents seemed paranoid and were behaving erratically. The pair said that they were afraid for their lives when they were with their parents. Moving to September 1. In the early morning hours in the town of Wanagrata, witnesses report being tailgated by a vehicle matching the description of the Trop family vehicle. They pulled over, and the vehicle pulled over behind them as well. 
A man exited the vehicle and ran toward them, but then he stopped, stared at them, and walked into a park. That same day, Jacobo was taken to a local hospital and treated for a stress-related illness after being found dazed and confused on the side of the road in the southeast area of New South Wales. Apparently, she separated from Mark at some point in the adventure. On September 2, she was transferred to the same hospital as her daughter, Rihanna. On September 3, Mark was taken into custody after being seen wandering the streets. He was described as being in good health. Now skipping to September 5, Ella is charged with two offenses, theft of a motor vehicle and possessing the proceeds of a crime. On September 6, Mark releases a statement where he said he was sorry for all the resources that were expended due to his family's adventure. On September 7, the authorities said that they were going to drop the charges against Ella. This would occur, but it would not be confirmed until March of 2017. Apparently, the owner of the vehicle was understanding about the situation. I guess delusional family vacation-related car theft was something the owner could relate to, who hasn't been there. After Mark released that statement, the family went back to business as usual, except they no longer offered the Pick Your Own Berries tours to the public. The police were not able to identify any actual threats to the family. The family was never being chased by anyone. They were never in any danger. Now moving to my analysis. Rihanna gave an interview to a magazine sometime after the family's unexpected trip. She said they were all very embarrassed and added that they did not want to be famous. She went on to talk about how her father had suffered a mental breakdown, which had been building for some time. He wanted to leave the farm because he felt as though he was in danger, and he wanted to spend some time with his family. This seems like kind of an unusual combination of items, but if you're running from nefarious operators, why not enjoy some family time? She said that the family received help from health professionals and was coming to terms with what happened. As I mentioned, the police confirmed no one was actually trying to steal money from the family. The police also noted that there had been no previously diagnosed mental health problems among the family members, and none of them were taking drugs. This wasn't caused by drug-induced psychosis. Other causes, like carbon monoxide poisoning, were also ruled out. So what could have been happening in a situation like this? We see indications that mental health treatment was delivered, but there is no information regarding specifics. There are several possible explanations to go through here. One, this was all orchestrated. There were no mental disorders anywhere in this case. Perhaps the family members were acting. Two, psychosis could have occurred in one of the family members, and it was transmitted to the others by folia du, otherwise known as shared psychotic disorder. The third theory would be that psychosis occurred in one family member and what the other members experienced was simply extreme fear, not psychosis. As far as other possible theories, as I mentioned, the police ruled out drugs or toxins in this case, so either this was deliberate, like this is what the family wanted to do, or some type of mental health factor was at work. I will break down the three possibilities that I talked about. The acting explanation is fairly straightforward, but it is unclear why anyone would choose to do that. They had nothing to gain and everything to lose from that behavior. They have not embraced their newfound notoriety. Moving on to the shared psychotic disorder explanation, let's take a closer look at this disorder. This disorder features primary and secondary partners, usually just one of each, but it can affect more than two people. The primary partner would be the person who had the psychosis first. Technically, they would have a disorder like delusional disorder and schizophrenia, not folia do. Only secondary partners would have folia do. The way this shared psychotic disorder theory would play out in a case like this would be something like imposed psychosis, a particular expression of folia do where none of the secondary partners had any pre-existing mental disorders, and when they are separated from the primary partner, the delusions disappear. So they return to normal once the exposure is terminated. This leaves us with the last theory, which is that one person became psychotic and the other people simply joined in with the fear component, but they were not actually psychotic. So they were somewhat paranoid, but not separated from reality. This theory doesn't offer a good explanation for some of the symptoms that were described, like catatonia, 
memory loss, disorganized thinking, and confusion. But it could certainly explain intense fear, which can manifest in a way that looks psychotic, especially in the short run. So it could be that one person was temporarily psychotic and the other family members had a fear so intense in reaction to that that they simply went along with the individual who was psychotic, perhaps somewhere on the border between fear and psychosis. Maybe this was a case where shared psychotic disorder symptoms were starting to take hold, but really didn't set in all the way, or affected some people, but not others. I think it's worth noting that the three adult children all realized something was wrong soon after the trip started. They escaped. Fear maybe got the best of them initially, but then when they started thinking about it, they realized that their parents were behaving erratically. If shared psychotic disorder, intense fear, or mixture of both was at work here, how is this possible? How could it be that people who had never been psychotic or paranoid go along with someone who may have been psychotic? Well, this is certainly not a common occurrence, but one could imagine factors that could make it more likely in a case like this. For example, this family worked together and probably trusted each other a great deal. They were more than just emotionally invested, like a normal family. It seems as though they may have shared financial risks and responsibilities as well, running their family business. If the father did become psychotic, this would have taken everybody by surprise. Their first instinct would be to trust someone who had probably been a role model for them for many years. If he had never been paranoid before, why would they distrust him now? Another possibility is that the father became psychotic, the mother then joined in, again, maybe with something like folio do, and it was like a domino effect. Once the two of them were both talking about these people who were trying to rob them, the three adult children became convinced of the threat because both of their parents were saying the same thing. Again, these are just theories. There's no way to know for sure what really happened. I can only imagine that this family may be reluctant to take another family vacation, but other than that, it appears as though they tried to return to normal. I hope everything works out for them. If nothing else, maybe they learned a little bit about paranoia and how it can appear to be contagious. Are there any lessons learned in this case? A few things come to mind. One, there are very few circumstances where throwing your cell phone out of a vehicle's window is a good idea. One might say it's a red flag. Two, one factor to consider when trying to figure out if behavior is consistent with a rational concern or paranoid delusion would be to examine the behavior and see if it would actually prevent the feared outcome. For example, in this case, leaving the house unlocked, the credit cards there, the phones there, and the keys in the vehicles does not prevent theft. It actually would have encouraged a financial loss. Three, trust is an important and necessary construct for survival, but it should have limits. Nobody is exempt from temporary expressions of mental health symptoms, including psychosis. Those are my thoughts on the Trump family adventure. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.